When a star dies, it can only happen in two ways. With a whimper or with a bang. The smaller of the stars, the vast majority of them, will wither and die slowly across millions of years, fading from their former glory till they're nothing more than a burnt out husk. But the greatest among their number disappear from the universe in nothing less than a cataclysmic detonation. This event is called a supernova, a brief, immensely powerful, and immensely luminous explosive demise. They are among the most incredible phenomena that our universe can produce, with a single star going supernova able to shine as bright as a galaxy in its final days before the light dies out and the star recedes into cosmic history. But not all supernovae are created equal. And when it's time for the most gargantuan dying stars of all to make their dramatic exit, the result is extraordinary. They die not in a supernova, but in a hypernova. An explosion ten times beyond the power of what most star deaths will bring. Some are greater still, a hundred times larger, and the results can be unlike anything else that the universe could possibly create. In order to understand a hypernova, we first got to understand a supernova. And stars go supernova based on their mass, with only a small fraction of stars being massive enough to die in that way at all. The vast majority of stars will instead expand in their old age, expand some more, and eventually eject their outer layers away into a nebula, while the left-behind inner layers will become a dwarf star. After that, the dwarf star will slowly cool over the course of billions of years. But a supernova, by contrast, comes after the nuclear core of a far more massive star has eaten through all its hydrogen, and then all its helium, and all the other elements that stars can form. Carbon, oxygen, silicon, and more. Once the core turns fully to iron, though, the fusion reaction is forced to stop, and the star, collapsing under its own sheer forces of gravity, gets hotter and hotter. The protons and electrons of the star fuse into neutrons. The core becomes a comparatively tiny mass of neutrons that will survive, in some cases, as a neutron star, but in stars going supernova, the process doesn't stop there. The incredibly dense neutron core pulls the outer layers of the star inward, crashing onto the neutron core and adding so much to its gravitational center that the core crushes and crushes and crushes even further. In the process, it heats to billions of degrees, and then, in the span of an instant, it explodes. Incredible amounts of matter and energy go blasting outward in all directions, undoing a process that took billions of years in just a few seconds. For a little while, a star that's died in a supernova will shine brighter than the rest of its host galaxy. And when it fades, one of two things will be left behind. Either a neutron star, where all those incredibly dense neutrons at the core were able to remain, or a black hole, swallowing the mass that its progenitor star left behind. The difference between a regular supernova and a hypernova is one of scale before anything else. And rather than be measured by the mass of the progenitor star that causes it, a hypernova is defined by the intense luminosity of the star death itself. Some astrophysicists, by the way, disagree with the hypernova classification, referring to them instead as Type 1c supernovae. Well, we hear at astrographics, that's just not very fun to say, so we're going to stick with hypernova. In order to classify as a hypernova, the death of a star needs to be at least 10 times brighter than a typical supernova at a bare minimum. And given the amount of energy that goes into a supernova to begin with, that means a hypernova is a truly insane occurrence. Quoting directly from a space Space.com article on the subject, that's enough energy to completely obliterate our sun a hundred thousand times over, or enough energy to supply our world's current total power consumption for the next billion, billion, billion years. To put it in a way that's perhaps a bit friendlier to a human perspective, viewing a hypernova right next to Earth would be sort of like being an ant right next to the explosion of an entire fully loaded oil tanker. And during a hypernova, the effects on the matter of the progenitor star can get truly ridiculous. For example, the gigantic mass of nickel ejected from a hypernova will typically travel up to 99% the speed of light, so fast that time itself bends around them as they travel. They often produce long-duration gamma-ray bursts, explosions of incredibly energetic beams of electromagnetic radiation that are widely recognized as the most powerful explosions in the universe. Stars capable of a hypernova will typically be over 30 times the mass of the sun, and when they die, their remnants aren't normal either. Black holes produced by hypernova are thought to rotate and emit grand jets of energy at velocities approaching light speed. Only one other sort of black hole typically does that. Specifically, the supermassive black holes that are found at the hearts of galaxies. Although the black hole produced by hypernovae aren't nearly so massive as that, the incredible release of energy involved with their birth is enough to produce similar characteristics. Across human history, we've only ever observed 
a few hypernovas, and in fact, the term only took on its modern meaning a couple of decades ago. Before that, a hypernova was a hypothetical sort of supernova that would have come from the extremely massive stars of the early universe, true giants that have long since disappeared from our cosmos. The first observed hypernova, as we classify them now, wasn't spotted until 1997, when the Dutch-Italian satellite Beppo Sax fantastic name, identified a gamma ray burst from a galaxy some six billion light years away from Earth. That burst would be traced back to a likely hypernova, although the host galaxy was so faint that its specific progenitor star couldn't be identified. In 1998, scientists got a closer look at a hypernova from a galaxy about 140 million light years away from Earth, an explosion that also happened to be the first time a gamma ray burst was directly linked to a supernova. The 1998 hypernova was about 100 times more powerful than a normal supernova and gave off a shockwave of energy about 10 times more powerful than the average supernova would. A handful have been observed in the years since, most of them being rather faint, although the term hypernova, being of course rather catchy, gets thrown around a little more frequently than it should, if all scientists and science reporters kept true to the official definition. As for the danger factor, we're pleased to say that Earth is under next to no threat, at least as we currently understand it, from any hypernova. A typical supernova has the potential to wash anything in a 100 to 250 light year radius in all directions with a sort of cosmic radiation that would destroy all life as we know it. But by the time any stars that close to Earth go supernova, humanity as we know it will be long gone. A hypernova, of course, could spread that destruction even further, but no star close enough to reach us with the blast of a hypernova explosion is also capable of creating one. There is a chance, of course, that Earth could be caught in a gamma ray blast given off by a hypernova-sized event, but the idea that a gamma ray burst could annihilate all life on Earth is something we both already face on a day-to-day -day basis and have absolutely no potential to detect or stop before it would hit us. If it's any reassurance, this particular outcome for Earth is both highly unlikely and also the best case option. If the universe decides to annihilate all life on Earth one day, the gamma ray option is the quick, easy, painless one simply winking us out of existence before the neurons in our brain even have time to let us know that something's happened. So that's nice. There are multiple astrophysical pathways to get to a hypernova, but the most common is what's described as the collapsar model. This is the sort of hypernova that produces gravitationally condensed objects in the aftermath, including black holes or neutron stars, depending on how much mass is left over. But usually, in the event of a star collapse big enough for a hypernova, a black hole is what should be left behind. In the case of a hypernova-worthy core collapse, a star goes through the process we explained for a supernova. Protons and electrons are forced together at such pressure they fuse into neutrons, and then the resulting collapse of the star's outer layers onto the inner layers create so much gravitational force that the whole thing explodes. But in the case of a hypernova, particularly a collapsar hypernova or one that comes from a collapsing star, Let's go a bit differently. In these cases, the outer layers of such massive stars are so crushing that they form a black hole almost immediately, collapsing into a void during the initial crush of the star before that outward explosion even takes place. That point of difference, plus a rapid spin on particular stars that are the most likely to go hypernova, are the two factors that lay the foundation for what comes next. The birth of a black hole, plus the rapidly spinning outer layers of the star, combine to create an incredibly strong electromagnetic storm. And as they do, Jets of matter burst outward from the black hole in opposite directions. Those jets, not just gamma rays, but hard stellar material as well, travel outward at nearly the speed of light. But as they go, they blast against the outer layers of the star in a burst that accelerates the coming explosion even further. The full combination, taken together, multiplies the luminosity of the supernova to such a high degree that it reaches hypernova strengths before fizzling out nearly as soon as it begins. Other hypernovae are created by a second mechanism unrelated to the first. In these instances, the critical difference maker is what happens at the core of especially large stars after the emission of radiation from the core has kept the star's structures intact for billions of years. But at the core of a star, some weird and wonderful physics can happen, and in this case, one bit of weird and wonderful physics, in particular, gamma ray decay. Highly energetic gamma rays are common at the hearts of massive stars, and often they decay into their component parts, an electron and a positron, the antimatter pair of an electron. Those two component parts can also combine into gamma rays, releasing a ton of energy in the process, and usually both gamma ray decay and electron-positron combination are happening all the time. But that balance is 
far from a guarantee. And another prominent way to explain some hypernovae comes from the effects that come when the cycle falls out of balance. If too many gamma rays decay into positrons and electrons at the right moments, in seething star cores where that process takes place countless times every second, and not enough of them are reconsolidate into gamma rays in time, then that incredibly brief moment in time when too much gamma ray decay has happened can stabilize the entire star. In particularly massive stars already primed for a core collapse soon, that process can be triggered early. But because that process is so rushed and includes so many reconsolidating gamma rays and their massive release of energy, it supercharges the core collapse and taking a star on the verge of supernova and giving it a far more violent death than it otherwise might have had. And then there's the third major way scientists believe a hypernova can be triggered, the binary hypernova. Binary star systems are very common across the known universe, where two stars orbit together around a common center of mass and are bound together in the cosmos. In fact, only about 15% of stars are estimated to be in single star systems like our sun, with the remaining 85% being binary or in systems that have three or more suns. In fact, there's some speculation that even our sun might have been part of a binary system once, but that's beside today's point. The point is, there are a lot of binary star systems, and in a specific kind of binary system, a hypernova becomes a distinct possibility. The binary star systems that are most fitting for a hypernova are the rarest of the rare, systems with not just one, but two stars that will end their lives by going supernova. In a hypernova-ready star system, one of the binary stars has already gone supernova, and when it did, three critical things happened. First, that exploding star didn't immediately trigger its companion star to go supernova too. Second, the exploding star left behind a neutron star rather than a black hole. And third, that neutron star will probably be on the larger side relative to most neutron stars. I'm not going to detour into a full explanation of how neutron stars work in this particular episode. In fact, we've already done that episode if you'd like to check it out. But suffice it to say that when neutron stars reach a certain mass, the gravitational forces at their heart become so incredibly intense that the internal forces that prop them up into a consistent shape are overwhelmed by the pull inward. Then they collapse into a black hole, and conversely, most black holes start out as concentrations of mass that become a neutron star and then become too massive to sustain. So in this hypothetical binary system, we've got one star that's already gone supernova and left behind a particularly massive neutron star that simply couldn't take much more mass without collapsing. As the other surviving star in the system gets older, it'll expand and expand and expand some more until finally it too goes supernova. But when it does, a high proportion of the material it flings outward is going to come under the gravitational sway of its twin. That twin, already a neutron star of incredible density, then pulls more and more of its exploded sibling's material onto itself until another runaway nuclear reaction takes place. The neutron star, overloaded with more and more mass, can no longer withstand the incredible pull at its gravitational center, and a runaway nuclear reaction kicks off. As a black hole forms at the innermost point of the neutron star and swallows the mass around it, an incredible explosion blasts outward, a hypernova of the third and final kind. But no matter how a given hypernova may happen, the result is the same. One of the most powerful releases of energy that our universe is capable of producing. There is truly nothing like them, and very few things that even come close.